Hello. Uh, let us talk about a very important concept called intensity transformation. And what is intensity transformation? Just to understand that you are dealing with image processing. And one of the key important aspects of image processing is that you need to be able to play with the intensity of the image. That means we are talking about the white and the black and white. I'm talking about the presence of light or the absence of light processing. So starting with the discussion that spatial domain method, what happens in a spatial domain? Spatial domain means we are talking about a two-dimensional plane where you have different access points. You have points, those are metrics. Those are actually filled with different intensities. That means somewhere they are dark, somewhere they are white. And when you do point processing, you are actually doing processing by points. That means you are processing by X and Y column and row vectors. And if you see, this transformation is very, very important. When you look at other way around, that area or mask processing, you put up a mask and region, that particular region which is covered under the mask, you process that. So point processing transformation happens to be like you convert a given pixel value to a new pixel value based on some predefined function. So what you, why are you doing it? Because you may change the intensity level using a different function. So you can understand that practically this means that you are actually transforming a function into a different aspects. Identity transformation happens to be like this that you are actually looking at you know the geometry, the function, is two-dimensional function. You have a gray levels on both X and Y. You are finding a new intensity levels ap by applying a function. So you are trying to actually do identity transformation. That means you're, you are changing the identity. It was something like zero. Now it is changing into one. Sometimes we call negative image. So we are going to talk about it. You see the negative image, as I just rightly pointed out, that what are you doing? This identity transformation is creating a negative image. How? This, the new value of g of x, y, you are subtracting the function of x, y minus 255. That means you are creating a new value by constantly subtracting the value, the function value of x, y, with the from from 255 you know that this is actually we are talking about 8 bit i'm talking about nearly black and white image okay and contrast you know on the other hand stretching or compression happens to be like you are actually stretch the gray level ranges whatever you desire for example you want to change the grayscale level from completely dark to slightly dark and you can see the picture differences you compress the gray level range so that this becomes a little clear about the compression there is a concept called thresholding and it's a special case of contrast compression you put a threshold value above which it gets actually change whenever we see thresholding thresholding means we are deciding a level for the image to have a shift and to have a functional change in the value Intensity level slicing happens to be like you're highlighting a specific range of gray levels and you're working on that and you're actually, you know, slicing the intensity levels so that you create a different part of the image differently. And uh, with there is another transformation we call actually logarithmic transformation. Logarithmic transformation and linear, there is a difference. You enhance the detail in the darker region of an image at the expense of detail in the brighter region. So what happens? The dark region gets more clear than the bright region. So you can see the differences. Logarithmic transformation, why logarithmic transformation plays? Because you are actually incrementally changing the slope. You can see the slope is not direct, slope is incrementally changing as you're comparing and you're passing through the logarithmic transformation. Exponential transformation is opposite. You know, reverse effect of the that of that obtained using logarithmic mapping, it is just opposite. That means brighter region gets more clear 
than the darker region and histogram equalization sometimes we do because we actually take care of uh, different levels of histogram equalizations. Image histogram is very important. Image histogram actually is producing the, uh, you know, different levels, the frequency of occurrence. So, it's a plot of gray level frequencies. That means the number of pixels in the image that have the gray levels. You are looking at uh, the frequency distribution of the gray level images. That's actually image histogram. And image histogram actually happens to help us. We divide the frequency by total number of pixels to represent as probabilistic normalized histogram. That means we know once we know the entire histogram, we can actually normalize it and we can produce a very compact representation of the image. So image histogram help us this example look at this image and we see the histogram. So question is could different image have exactly same histogram? No because that histogram representation is very unique it it is based on its present you know a present um, you know appearance in terms of darkness and light and variations of it so properties of image histogram you can see it's a very important thing histogram clustered at a very low end corresponds to dark image that means you can understand that if it is at the low region it is dark and if the histogram is clustered at the very high end region is actually bright image. So histogram easily can help us to identify whether the image is dark or whether the image is bright. Now properties of image histogram, histogram with a small spread according you know corresponds to low contrast. You can see that's the histogram in either side is missing but means that means mostly dark, mostly bright or mostly gray we can understand by its cluster. So cluster of histogram plays a very important role and histogram with wide spread corresponds to high contrast image. Why? Because that means high contrast. Why? Because we see the frequency of gray level is across the entire image. So there is a high contrast. That means we, we have a more detail of the image visible. So properties of the image histogram, you can see low contrast, you can see the differences, na? high contrast, you can see the histogram representation difference in terms of a low contrast image and a high contrast image. Histogram equalization is a very important idea. The main idea is that I have to equalize histogram so that it is smooth. So the main idea is to redistribute the gray level values uniformly. So what happens? you suddenly see that the image looks very smooth because actually histogram is equalized. That is a very important scientific experiment on the image. So histogram equalization you can see here in practice equalized histogram might not be flat. It can be, you see that's what I'm saying that it is very smooth, it, it looks like that. So there is a probability what we see is that uh, definition if you look uh, at random experiment and random experiment means we are talking about an experiment whose result is not certain in advance and you do random experiment but what is the outcome the result of random experiment and sample space all possible outcomes an event is a subset of sample space so there is a random variable you can understand the random variable we have it's a function that assign a real number to outcome fit and random variables could actually discrete or it can be continuous so random variable examples are there and random variable plays a very important role in, in scientific experiments. And especially consider the experiment of throwing a pair, like we are talking about pair, throwing a pair of dice and we need to find the sum of dice. So it actually corresponds to a possible probability of the six surface there is x is equal to five corresponds to possible combination, uh, one, four, four, one, two, three, three, two, possible combination that you get five means these are the possible phase. So any type we can actually have this random variable understanding and characterize random variable we have two things here. One we call probability density function, PDF, that is f of x, a small f of x of x and probability distribution function. One is the density, that means what is the density of the probability and what is the distribution of the probability. So one is small x, a capital F, another is a small f. So probability density function, it talks about actually real valued f of x describing the probability at each outcome of the sample space or being close to some number which is actually very, very close. So an example, this is a Gaussian and you can have a discrete case, it's like a histogram. 
and probability distribution the integral of function defines the probability distribution you can see how it is distributed over the space so talking about probability density and probability distribution happens to help us in the image processing a lot so to look at this probability distribution function you have a possible probability density and this is the kind of distribution we have an example and uh, Random variable transformation, we basically have, uh, you need to define a new random variable using a transformation. And then if we know that probability density function, we can find another function of the probability and it can be shown as like this. Uh, this is a mathematical transformation of the random variable. This is an example. Uh, we, I will suggest you to take a look at the text, some special transformation case we have. Histogram equalization, as I'm saying, that it plays a very important role and uh, smoothing out the noises. Histogram equalization, there is a assumption, it is a PGM image. There are levels, you can understand, 256. These are possible gray levels and these are input images. And you find the histogram equalization. Ultimately, you can see the picture on the right hand side is much smoother and more contrast is, you know, equalization effect is very good. So these are actually equalization example and you can see 3 bit uh, 64 by 64 images. 3 bit means you can understand 8 possible color values and you have this kind of histogram equalization example. And uh, histogram, image histogram is very very important, you can understand that. So histogram specification matching, histogram equalization yields an image with uniform PDF, probability density function. And what if we want to obtain an image with a non-uniform PDF, this can sometimes give better results. So apply histogram specification in instead of equalization. That means we need to have either equalization or specification depends on what we know, need. For example, what we need to provide is original image and desired PDF, probability density function of the histogram. So histogram specification matching, you can see you have an input original image and the desired probability distribution function what you produce histogram specified image one whole fine transformation which can actually produce that specific types of image so steps here you compute the equalization transformation compute this i2 through z and problem we do not have this so practically what you're doing here we are trying to find out histogram specification matching and uh, histogram specification matching you compute again transformation you're actually gradually doing over the time and ultimately you summarize that is specification equalization transformation and compute equalization transformation and compute final value of the image so histogram specification we do not need to apply this transformation separately but we can combine and iteratively we can apply this producing a specification example you can see an image 3 bit 64 by uh, 64 image you have this input histogram and this is actually a specified histogram and this is actually resulted histogram so histogram specification might yield superior results than histogram equalization so find the difference between histogram specification and histogram equalization histogram specification as you can understand that it is expected to produce better results than histogram equalization so local histogram processing, histogram equalization specifications are global method. The intensity transformation is completed, but global transformations are not appropriate for enhancing little detail. So local histogram processing, you have to define a window and move it through the pixel by pixel at each location. The histogram of the point to the neighborhood is computed. You map the intensity and ultimately move to the next location. So it is a window based operation you're actually calculating histogram of each samples. So you can see that we have these windows, these windows are actually calculating histograms of each and ultimately combining up with the statistics. We have mean average intensity, variance, and of course, there are actually running average or example. These are actually standard deviations, which is estimating the useful image, 14.3. So the deviation getting better is producing better results. So local histogram statistics, his, compute histogram statistics in a local region, you have to compute this uh, local average intensity and local variance. That's very important. 
and ultimately using histogram cell for image enhancement it is very useful when we need to enhance certain areas of the image we actually find the histogram and we apply histogram either equalization or histogram specification so enhance a dark area and find dark low contrast area using local statistics so ultimately this is an example and uh, these are some of the questions J intensity operation yield pixel values well the range is between 0 to 55 you must convert the value back to the range to ensure that the image is displayed properly so can be computed using the linear transformations with this so we finish here and we enjoy our